Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Matt Duvall, and I work here at First Baptist, <laughs> though some people might not believe that. Uh, I am glad to be standing up here in front of you this morning, uh, glad to be here and worship with you. I have missed you, uh, but have enjoyed these last couple weeks. They have been very special. Uh, if you are joining us here uh, this morning, if you're a visitor, uh, if you would, tear off the tab that's on your worship folder and fill that out and put it in the offering plate when it comes by so that we could have a better record of your visit here with us. Um, we also welcome those who are joining us on the television and uh, appreciate you joining us in worship this morning. There are a couple of announcements that I'd like to make before we get started. Uh, the youth are going to have their meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. And though it says discipleship on here, we will not be having a discipleship uh, tonight for a couple of reasons, the weather being one of those. Uh, and then we will have a deacons meeting tonight at 7 o'clock, and Allison is going to be joining us for that. Uh, so I encourage you uh, to be here at 7 o'clock for the deacons meeting. Um, we're getting back into our normal uh, routine schedule um, be aware of the different meetings that are going on uh, this week and next week. There's one important thing we need to mention this morning. You can see it on the back of your bulletin, and that's that we have another staff anniversary. Uh, there, uh, it was said this past week, there are some people that are on staff here that we could do without. But Billy Hunter is not one of those people. Uh, Billy does so much around here, not only around the physical plan of the church, but in the lives of so many of you that are a part of this congregation, uh, that he is indispensable. And we are so grateful for the way that he faithfully and, and tirelessly uh, serves his Lord in so many different ways. Uh, so when you see Billy... Congratulate him on 19 years and encourage him to keep going like he's been going. Let's stand now and greet each other before we worship.
you give to the Lord all glory. And our hymn of praise is hymn number two, Holy, 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 as we stand together and sing. and our minds together as we pray. Holy God, loving parent, redeeming Savior, ever-present guide, as the loud voices of our world vie for our attention, allow us to embrace the silence of communion with you. Still us from within, O God. Surround us without. Guide us from above and redeem us as we journey. Come and move among us in this hour of worship so that our minds may be illumined, our emotions stirred, our motives rearranged, and our faith renewed. As you move in this place, may the words of our lips, the songs in our hearts, and the feelings that stir within us be pleasing to you. We pray in the name of the one who continues to redeem us, even now, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me as we read responsively Psalm 29. It's in your bulletin. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. 
The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord stakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Our reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as a ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Words of God's promise to us, a promise of redemption and restoration. Let us pray together. O God, our creator, you have formed and fashioned us. You have breathed life into us again and again. You have given us sustenance for our journey, a light to our path, and a hope for our travels. And you have given to us the promise of redemption, the hope of restoration, and the assurance of protection. You have called us beloved, precious, and honored. And how grateful we are for the relationship we have with you, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer. We've passed through waters and you've been with us. We've walked through fire and you've walked with us. We've been broken and you've redeemed us. We have felt mistreated and you've said to us, precious, lovely, honored. We've not always felt worthy of love, and yet you've loved us. We've been lost on our journey, and you've called us by name. Holy God, you've reminded us again and again of your promise to be with us. Yet we often come up short. Our spirits are weakening, our trust waning, our lives out of focus. We admit that today we even now bring hesitations and reluctance and doubt with us. We confess we too easily forget your promise of redemption and restoration. And out of our own stubbornness, out of our own arrogance, we know we've tried to do it alone. God, in these moments of worship, enter our hearts with your peace and your love once again. Expose us to the light of truth. Soothe our restlessness. Draw us out, O God. Slow us down. 
Forgive our sins and restore our vision. Send us on with new resolve and whisper words of reminder to us. I have called you by name. You are mine. And may this be the message we embody, O oh God, as a community of faith. The message we show to our neighbors and our friends, the message to our family and our co-workers, may it be our message to the world that you've called each one of us by name. We are yours. And so we unite our voices in recognition of your peace, your protection, and your promise to us, praying the words of our Lord together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn is number 338, How Firm a Foundation. If you'll join me in standing to sing. your blessing as we return a portion to you. Help us to use these tithes and offering to spread the good news of salvation in our church, our community, and over all the earth. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
What a wonderful word for all of us. Tell you what, I'm glad to be up here doing this rather than changing another diaper this morning. (laughs) Some of y'all told me, but you know, you just, you don't know until you get into it. But uh, I didn't realize that Well, it's been since middle school since I've talked about poopy diapers this much. And you just don't laugh about it now like you used to. Anyway, I'm glad to be here. What's in a name? Have you ever heard that phrase, what's in a name? Or how about a good name is better to be had than riches? That's from Proverbs. You ever heard it? We've been thinking a lot about names recently in our house. It was a few months ago that we came up with our daughter's name. After much discussion and debate, making lists, comparing lists, including names, taking them away, adding them back, lobbying back and forth, trying to make deals, we finally decided on a name. Two names, actually. And both come from our families of origin. Catherine, mostly from my side. And James, mostly from Caroline's side. And we've been calling her by her name for months now. For months. It's been monogrammed onto blankets and loveys and little pieces of clothing. It's been put into letters and stitched into patterns But it wasn't until just a few weeks ago that we were able to look her in the face and call her by her name. It was during those first few moments after she was born. The doctor handed her to the nurse there at her right side. They cleaned her off in about five seconds. I cut the cord. They swaddled her up real quick and handed her to Caroline. Caroline's face was the first one that she really saw after she opened her eyes. And smiling there back into her face, we said, Welcome to the world, Catherine James Duvall. We are so glad you are here. We are so glad you are here. It was a sacred moment to be able to, to offer her her name in person for the first time. And I began to realize in that moment that suddenly I felt a connection to this tiny life that I didn't anticipate. I knew that I would love her, but I didn't know that it would actually feel like this. I didn't know how it would feel, actually. But the best that I can describe is that my heart grew. Not like the Grinch, but really, my heart just grew. It expanded. A few moments later, when they took her and put her under the heat lamp to prick her heel and give her a shot and do all the little tests that they do, I went over to stand next to her. And I put my hand on her to try and calm her, and she immediately wrapped her little fingers around my thumb. And in my heart, I thought, okay, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Just, just name it. It's yours. And y'all were right. She's already wrapped around my finger, or I'm already wrapped around hers. It probably goes both ways. And I knew it would happen. I just didn't know it would happen this quickly. And now we are calling her by her name. We are the ones who have named her, and we are continuing to name for her who she is. We are using her name, and a part of our job is to communicate to her and to help her shape her identity. Hear these words from Luke's gospel about the shaping of an identity. From the third chapter of Luke, beginning with verse 15. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, 
John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And then over to verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. So as people are coming to John the baptizer, they are trying to put their finger on his identity, on exactly who he is. Is he the Messiah? Is he the one who will free us and who will reign over us? He speaks with power and authority. Where does it come from? Is John the Messiah? For generations, the people of Israel had been hoping for a savior, someone who would redeem Israel and gather everyone together, someone who would bring hope. During the first century and in the years leading up and probably even through Jesus' birth, there were many people who came along claiming to be the Messiah, but it turned out they weren't really. And we can understand why, can't we? We can understand why. What an ego boost it would have been to have had followers and people willing to do whatever you said to do if you claimed to be the Messiah. Don't we have these in our day and time? I think about a certain basketball coach. I think about a certain musician. Pick an arena. Pick any arena in life. There are people who follow individuals and assign to them certain messianic qualities. But John didn't do this. He didn't claim he was the Messiah, and it it would have been a little embarrassing if he had when Jesus did walk up that day at the River Jordan. No, John knew he wasn't the Messiah. He was there to prepare the way for the Messiah. And when Jesus did come along to John to be baptized, John did so. And Luke tells us that as Jesus was praying afterwards, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and a voice from heaven said, You are my son, my, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. You are my child. I love you. I am pleased with you. And the more I think about it, the more I believe those words weren't just offered to Jesus that day. I believe those words are offered to us now. You are my child. I love you. And I am pleased with you. See, in choosing to follow Jesus, we are gathered into the family of God and we are given a new name, Beloved. We are all of us sons and daughters of God. And God says to us, because of who you are in me, I am pleased with you. But how often do we really stop to think about that? How long has it been since you thought about that? How often do you say your real name to yourself, beloved child of God? How often are others saying your name back to you, beloved child of God? How long has it been since you heard that new name given to you? You see, I don't think we can hear it enough. I really don't. I don't think we can hear it enough. I don't think we can hear it too much. 
that we are beloved by God and that we are children of God and that God is pleased with us. And part of the reason for that, I think, is that we forget. We forget so easily. I don't know why we do, but I know that we do. We forget that we are beloved children of God. Part of the reason, too, is that we hear so many other names that the world chooses to give us. Stupid, lazy, poor, rich, broken, addict, female, conservative, male, liberal, proud, immigrant, skinny, heathen, leper, fat, cripple, divorcee, loser, winner, weak, strong. We could go on and on and on. We hear all these other names that everybody else but God tries to give us. We hear these almost every day, and so we need, I think, to hear our God-given identity spoken more than just one time at our baptism, more than just one time when we decided to follow Jesus. I was talking with my mother-in-law this past week while she was up here visiting us and offering a little help. We were talking about family, family that we hadn't seen in quite a while, family on both sides. And she began telling about a time that their whole family went to New Orleans for a wedding of one of Jim's nieces. And Anne said to Caroline, do you remember the parrot in the hotel lobby. Caroline said, oh yeah, I remember. What, what was his name? What was the parrot's name? You see, in the hotel lobby of the Holiday Inn in the Garden District of New Orleans, there was a bird cage with a parrot in it. It was a big, ornate bird cage because in New Orleans they do things big and ornate. And on the side of the cage, there where everybody who passed by could read it, there was a big brass plaque right there on the side that said, My name is Antonine. That was the parrot's name. Antonine. And it said so right there on the plaque on the side of this bird cage. He was named after one of the streets in that area of New Orleans, Antonine, right there on the brass plaque on the side of that big birdcage. But most people apparently didn't call the parrot by his name, his name that was on that brass plaque on the side of that cage. And my mother-in-law remembers this because she went up to his cage and she looked at the plaque and she had to do a double take. And she said his name kind of in her mind to make sure that she was saying it correctly. And she said, hello, Antonine. And the parrot replied back immediately. Hello, Antoine. Hello, Antoine. See, he had been called Antoine by everybody that had come by that cage that hadn't taken the time to look and actually read the plaque. He had been called Antoine by everybody that had come by and didn't really care, really, what his name was. And so he would say to everybody that came by, Hello, Antoine. Hello, Antoine. Hello, Antoine. They had simply misread the plaque or they hadn't cared. But whatever the case, it had changed his identity. It had changed who he thought he was. People had named for him who he was rather than the name that he was given. And I wonder this morning, where in your life are you saying to people, Hello, Antoine. Hello, Antoine. Hello, Antoine. Because you've been listening 
to everything that everybody that comes by your life says to you, rather than the name that is on the brass plaque on your heart. Are you giving people your real identity? Or are you just repeating back what you hear everybody else tell you? The Lord who holds the power of creation in his hands says to us from the prophet Isaiah, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Do you hear that? In other words, to all of Israel and to all of us who are followers of Jesus, because he is Lord of all, no matter what we are going through, No matter how far we feel separated, no matter what has happened before, no matter what the experience, no matter what labels and names we carry, when we pass through the waters, we are not alone. God will be with us. In the wild and untamed areas, those parts of life that seem uncontrollable and overwhelming, do not fear. We will not be overtaken. And though it may feel at times that we will be consumed by that which we go through, that we will be unrecognizable when we get to the other side, do not fear. The Lord says, I will be with you. You will make it through. That passage from Isaiah calls back to the story of Jacob. Do you remember the story of Jacob who stole the birthright and blessing, whose brother Esau wanted to kill him, and so he took off. He spent years getting his just desserts at the hands of his mother's brother. And when it finally came time for him to return, he wrestled through the dark night of his soul until he emerged with a new name, Israel. And even then, though, there was the threat of Esau and his approaching army. And in a last-ditch effort to control and persuade, Jacob sent lambs and sheep and goats and servants through the river Jabbok onto the other side, a sort of peace offering. He also sent family on before, servants on before. But it wasn't any of those that Esau was looking for. He was looking for his brother. And when they finally came together with Jacob begging in in his heart for his life to be spared, it wasn't a rope that Esau put around Jacob's neck. It was his loving arms. And I think it's because grace had made it through to the other side before Jacob did. And so it is with us. No matter what we go through, our God is on the other side. Our God is with us as we go through. Our God is with us now. No matter what we have gone through, what we are going through, what we will go through, remember, you are a child of God. You are beloved. There is no need to fear, for we have been Redeemed. We have been called by name. We are God's. And into God's loving arms, we can trust our lives. May it be so for us today and always. Amen. Our hymn of opportunity this morning is hymn number 590, God, our author and creator. If there is any decision that you would make as we stand and sing, will you come? Let's stand together.
foods, it's helped us get through some long days um, for the encouragement that sleep will come. Maybe not this week or next week, but it'll eventually come. Uh, remember the changes to our schedule. How about that? Whoa, <laughs> that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Getting out a little bit early, that's a late Christmas present from me to you. Um, but I hope you all have a wonderful week. Uh, as we move into, uh, though it doesn't feel like spring, we are beginning to move towards Easter. We're beginning to move towards Lent. We are beginning the season where we're going to focus anew on the growth, uh, internal growth that we need to encourage in our own lives, the growth between all of us. And I hope that you will continue to make an effort to be a part of what we are doing in this place. Let's receive the benediction. Brothers and sisters, as you go forth from this place, remember your identity. You are the beloved. And in you, God is pleased. You are a child of God. Now go forth from this place and by your living, call others into the new identity that rests in them. Amen. Amen.